Well, good morning to everyone. It is that as I would happen to be uh, reading some material and such, it just uh, led me to the church today. What is a church? And then I was reading a particular article about church attendance and, and why it is that, some, that uh, it, it's not going up, it's going down and such throughout the nation. And But I think about what is church? When we talk about the church is one foundation, when we talk about going to church or, or just church in general, what do we think of in this? And John asked me, well, what are you preaching on this morning? I said, well, I'm going to preach on the church. And what about the church? There's so many avenues that you can go down and preach about the church. But what is church? And there's so many descriptions of the church given throughout the Bible, and these are just some of these. What about the church? The church is a, an army of God. You know, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Gird yourself with the, the belt of truth. Put on the gospel of peace. And, and we're, we're talking about an army, or we're talking about God's family. We're not going to talk about each one of these. You can just read through these. You know, that the, the church is just described as... Um, the sheep and, and the shepherd being Jesus. And, and there's just so many descriptions of the church. The church is described as family, de de described as, as priest of God. And so when we talk about church, well, how do we grasp all this that we're talking about? When the Bible talks about church, well, what do you mean when we say we're, we're going to church or, or I belong to this church uh, uh, um, what does your church believe about this or teach about this or so? And, and just, what do, what do you mean when we talk about church? And why do we come together as church? Well, partly because Matthew 16, Jesus said, I will build my church. Church is God-ordained. It's not a man-made idea that when God had in his mind a, a gathering of people, Jesus said, I will build my church. And so he came for a purpose. He came for a purpose and that we are a part of that purpose. We are a part of church. Church literally means gathering. When we gather, we are church. Uh, called out is another word for it. That we, we sometimes we mix the, that we are called out and, and Colossians 1, 13 and 14 say that we are called out of darkness into his marvelous light, that, that we make a difference, that we're called out from sin and called into righteousness. But this literally means a gathering. In worldly descriptions, you would have the word church being used whenever you would have a, a gathering. Let's say you had the, the four states fair and people gathered there, they you did the word church for that gathering. It came to mean, religiously, church being gathering together for religious purposes, gathering together for worship, a gathering together of, of church. And so I think our idea of church, good ideas, bad ideas, sometimes affect our relationship with, with God and with each other because of our ideas of church. And I was thinking of this. And here's the article that I read in particular, a little bit of it. We're not going to read the whole thing. But it said the Hartford Institute of Religious Research, um, there's a new book entitled Why Nobody Wants to Go to Church Anymore. Why is it that church attendance is declining throughout the United States? not only with the Churches of Christ, but just in religion uh, generally. That, that younger people just don't find that it's important to go to church, that it's, it's necessary to go to church, or that church is even a part of their life. It seems that the younger that they are, the, the less important church is, and church is, attendance is declining. Now, those who are older, and, and I would say, you know, starting my age and up, which would be, you know, you're getting on old up there, along that line, that, that we grew up in a different idea of church and what church means than when you're talking with someone who's in their 20s or 30s. And we need to understand that, that there is a, a different thinking of this. And because of this thinking, I think that affects attendance. Less than 20% of Americans attend worship services every week. 
And you know this. You leave your house and you drive through your neighborhood. You go down their roads and, and you see maybe people out in their yard doing work like this or, or, or they're out and about and they've got just different things to do on the weekends. This is a Sunday. This is a day of rest and they, they we're going to rest on this day. And don't even think about coming to worship services. Don't even have that in mind. That's not a part. They don't get up in the morning and say, well, uh, do we go to church or are we not going to go to church? It's not even, not even thought of. We're not going. It's not even thought about going. You know, it's, it, there's just no talk about it. No, uh, but then on the other hand, you have other families that get up and, and there's not a discussion of whether are we going to church or are we not going to church. It, yes, we're going to church. It's Sunday, isn't it? That's where we go. That's what we do. And so he, he lists mainly four reasons why people don't go to church. Number one, it is they don't want to be lectured. Now, now listen, that, that, that kind of offends me. What are you talking about, lecturing? Do I lecture? No, my goodness. And so I think about that. Well, what about the preacher's part? Because, you know, that, that's talking to the preacher. You're not talking to the song leader right there, is he? Are you talking to the preacher? And so it is. And so I, I, I kind of say, hey, wait a minute. You know, all Scripture is given by God, inspired by God, that for instruction, reproof, exhortation, you know, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Well, it, well, reprove and rebuke are, are two negatives, and exhort is one positive. So, I, you know, I try to justify, hey, if I just do it a third of the time exhorting, then, then I'm biblical. You know, then two-thirds, uh, I, I rebuke and exhort, and rebuke and, and reprove. Well, you know, people don't want to be lectured all the time. They don't want to be told all the time that I, you, you're just terrible people. Right? And I understand that. I don't want to come across and say how... I know I talk about sin, and sin is real, and the devil is real, and, and, and we need to exhort one another to do what's right, but we need to correct one another because we don't always do what's right. And, and so there's that line of correcting, exhorting, reproving, rebuke, with all long-suffering and doctrine. Don't want to be lectured. They want to see the church as judgmental. Number two is this. And I don't know, I, I hear a lot of this, so I really don't know exactly what this is talking about. And maybe some of you would say, well, preacher, let me tell you, this is what they're talking about. Uh, I don't know about the church being judgmental as far as saying, and maybe along with the number three of this being hypocritical, uh, dovetailing into this or whatever, but it is, uh, along this line, it, you don't like to be said, um, well, your sin is greater than my sin, or, you know, because we do all sin. And, and we're not being hypocritical in this or judgmental in this, but there is a right and there is a wrong. There, there, there is that which God wants us to do, and there is that which God does not want us to do. And, and so we try to do what is right and, and not what is sinful, because that's harmful to us. He doesn't want us to lie and to cheat and to steal and do all these things because... Uh, that's not good for, for anyone, is it? It's sin. He's not calling good things sin. He's calling things that harm us sinful. So he's just trying to help us do what's right. That's what parents do for children. Yeah, I know these teenagers are like, well, my parents won't let me do anything. They take all the fun out of being a teenager. That's our job, y'all. Get used to it, right? You, you, you shouldn't do it. We're not there to take all the fun out of being teenagers. We're, we're there to help you. And we know consequences of sin. We don't want that for our children that we love and hold dear. God does the same thing for us. He loves us. We are dear to him. And so when we're saying that the church is judgmental, it just seems like you're always pointing a finger at each one of us and telling us, no, 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 no hypocritical about it because when you tell me no, 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 you're doing the same thing. <laughs> Judgmental or hypocritical or irrelevant. And this is what really 
brought attention to me about uh, is the church just something that we go to like we go to a booster club athletic booster club meeting at, at schools and we go and support our, our athletes and, we, and we're, we're athletic boosters or band boosters or, or we, we're in the Kiwanis club or Rotary club or, or some social club or something that, that it, it's church just one of those things that we attend and, and it's good that, that we do that it you know, that's what we do because we live in the United States of America and, and we are, we're Christian nations and we, so we go to church just like we go to other activities that we, we have. And, and if we miss church, it's just no different than, than missing a Kiwanis Club meeting or something. That, uh, you know, it's just, is it just something that, that we attend, that we're a part of, that we a attend church instead of be the church? I read along with this article that it just happened to be several things catch your eyes when you're, I'm, I'm going to preach about church. And, and so just like when you buy a car, then you start seeing those cars everywhere. You didn't see any before you bought yours. Now they're everywhere. We're going to talk about church. So I just see things. One of them said that uh, you cannot change the world by going to church. You change the world by being the church. It's your concept of what about church. And it's just not something that we go to on Sunday morning. Well, let's go to church. And that kind of thinking can make it irrelevant. What about church? Well, what about can we make it important in your life? And so I want to talk about some things about church and our relationship to church. Number one, that's all introduction, y'all. Number one, the church is the only institution, as we would say, God-ordained institution where you find salvation. Now listen, there are other organizations that are wonderful uh, organizations that do good, benevolent work, and we'll read about those uh, with Thanksgiving and with Christmas coming up and everything, and, and you'll read about organizations saying, we need to help those who are less fortunate, we need to help those who are needy, and we need to be benevolent, and these organizations are wonderful in what they do in benevolence, but they cannot save your soul. Only the church is where we found salvation. And it makes the, a difference in your life. You say, this, this makes a, a difference for all eternity. About church, it's just not going to church. It's, it's, it's committing to say, I want to live a Christian life. I want Jesus to make a difference in my life. I want others to see a difference in my life. I want to be a part of, uh, of this where it says that they, the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Those that should be saved, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. I put two different uh, versions up there. So I liked one of them saying those who were being saved. Uh, added to their number of those who are being saved and, and then added to the church daily such as should be saved. He say, we're, we're added. He adds to the church. The church is the saved. The saved is the church. You can't be saved outside the church. It's only through the church. Ephesians 5, 23 talks about he's the savior of the body. The body is the church. It separates the church. It cannot be Irrelevant. Cannot be j just, just put on the shelf equal with every other organization there is. This separates us. We're talking about spiritual things. Only through the church can we be saved. You can be good and be a part of a, a, a lot of different organizations. And a lot of them teach good character. Uh, being good people, doing good things. But the church, and only the church, has the blood of Jesus, and that makes all the difference in the world. Only through the church can we be saved. And then we talk about the church also. Number two, church prays for you. In Acts 12, verse 5, as Peter was in prison, it's a, and the church came together and prayed, and we had our prayer list that we read this morning. We have a, our prayer list in the bulletin and, and on the, the back of the calendar, and we pray for people because we have a God who hears our prayers. That, that our Creator, and I point up, you know, God is always up, 
he listens and yearns for our prayers. As we bow down our head, and, and I make this description, if we bow down our head, he bows down his ear. He longs to hear from us. He, he just cannot w wait to hear from his children. And, and, and we, we pray together. And it's wonderful because there's no other organization here upon this, this earth that, that we offer the avenue of prayer to a God who hears and answers. It's only through church that we have this. You're a child of God. Our Father. And we pray. And then number three as we go with this. We have benevolence in the church also. We're not the only organization that offers benevolence. But it is that, you know, you, you talk about different phrases and such. And I like this particular phrase. It's not in the Bible. But it offers a biblical view of benevolence. It says you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. And when we love, we give. When we love one another, we help one another. We help one another in, in physical things with benevolence. We help one another in spiritual things with, with prayer and support and encouragement. We, we, only through the church, we help one another. And then the next slide, it says the church comforts you. There are times in our life when we need comfort. And I know that there are organizations that, that people grow close and they care about one another, but not like the church. When Mama passed away and, and the church comforted me, my sister, I don't know how it is that people go through times in their life and how they make it through without support of the church. I, I don't know what people do. And they're missing something greatly. They're missing a church family that cares for one another, really cares for one another, and, and we weep for those who weep, and we rejoice with those who rejoice. But at times of weeping, when, when we know that we have this, this bond of Christianity, where we're in the same family, and we comfort one another, and God is called the God of all comfort, who comforts us. He comforts us that we may be able to comfort others by the comfort that we received when we needed comfort. And there have been times when you needed comfort and you were comforted and now you can help others in times of need. And the church is such a blessing. If this were the only blessing, and it's not, if this were the only blessing, I want to be a part of a church that comforts and cares and encourages and loves. That we comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God. It's, it's passed on. We received it to give to others. Sometimes it is that you can go in, in, to someone and say, I, I know what you're going through. I lost my mother too. And I say, I know. Sometimes it is that, that we don't know what they're going through. You, you, maybe you haven't lost your mother. And, and, or, and, and you say, I, I, I don't know what you're going through. I haven't faced that, but, but I'm here for you. I don't know how. How people make it without the church. Not only for this, but, but particularly for this. To comfort one another and help one another. It's just not that we just come together as strangers and we come up and we listen to some songs and we participate in this and listen to a sermon, have some prayers, and, and, and then we separate and, and, and we're just people that come together and then leave. That's not church. Church is family. And church is belonging together. And church is vital. Vital to our, our 
family units. And our family units are, are vital to our country. And it all begins with the foundation of church. And last of all, the church loves you. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. He didn't say, by this shall all men know. It's how many times you attend Sunday morning. How many times you attend Bible class. How many times you're here on Wednesday night. And, and sometimes I, 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 I'm guilty of this. That's what I count as faithful. Jesus said, by this shall all men know. Do you love one another? Well, everything that we mentioned this morning comes under the heading, do you love one another? If you love one another, you pray for one another. If you love one another, you want to come together and see one another. If you love one another, you help one another. If you love one another, you pray for one another. If you love one another, you comfort one another. Do you love one another? Remember last week we talked about moving from faith to love. Add to your faith virtue and virtue, temperance, and knowledge and patience. Add to your faith. I know you're faithful. I know you believe that God there is a God. I know you do. And you have faith. Absolutely you have faith. But do we have love? Church loves one another. And because I love you. That's why I reprove and rebuke you. Because I love you. I want you to go to heaven. We're all going to, we're, we want to take as many people as possible to go to heaven. Do what's right. Be the church. I don't know if this has encouraged you, uplifted you, Maybe you'd be making a firmer decision to say, you know, I need, I need to be more a part of the church. I, it, it's just something I go to instead of something that I'm a part of. Uh, maybe you see a, 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 a change needed in your life, a commitment needed. Well, church. I was going to say it makes all the difference in this world, and it does, but it makes all the difference for eternity. Not just coming to church, being the church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Is what Jesus said. His purpose for coming, so that we would be his church. He's the head of the body, the church. We're his body, we're his family. We're his followers, his disciples, his ambassadors. Those are my thoughts about church. Is there anyone that maybe privately you said, I need to make a change in my life with my family and in our thinking about church and our and our relationship about church and our involvement with church? Maybe it is publicly. You say, I, I need to respond and I need your prayers. I haven't been to church. So I need to be. I've affected others and, and, and others are looking at me and I haven't let my light shine like I needed to. I need words of encouragement and help. Oh, oh you beat me to it. I didn't see the screen. <laughs> Only a step. I remember when I was made the decision to be baptized. And, and I said, when we get to this word on this song, I'm going to step out. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to become a Christian. And maybe it is. You, you're looking at that song and say, when we get to the, this word on this song, I'm going to step out. I'm going to make a difference in my life. I need to become a Christian. Been thinking about it for some time. I'm going to do it. What better time than right now to become a Christian? be baptized so that your sins would be washed away 
Won't you come right now while we stand and while we sing?